Hey everybody, welcome to the 2020 Champion Awards. First of all, congrats uh, to the hundreds of nominees and especially to the finalists and the winners. This is incredible. Um, congratulations to the Female Founders Alliance. Uh, your team has done an incredible job leading this super important work. I always think about intersectionality and equity in this sense. If we don't bring everyone to the table, we're just missing parts of the story and we're not gonna get the best products, we're not gonna get the best storytelling and we're not really gonna get the whole picture. So to have everyone in one place, um, I hope you guys have an incredible night. Again, congratulations to everyone. This is really amazing. Welcome to the 2020 Champion Awards. Today we celebrate the people and organizations that meaningfully advance equity in the workplace. This summer, hundreds of people from across the country nominated their champions. Our champion committee reviewed more than 600 nominations from 25 cities across the country. They narrowed it down to 30 finalists across six categories, and then thousands of you voted for your champions. For the advocates that create change, the sponsors that activate their resources to help you succeed, the companies that care for their people and act like it, the role models who show us what's possible, the founders building tomorrow's leading companies, and the investors who are fueling them. Today we'll meet the finalists. We'll hear straight from the people who nominated them, and then we'll reveal the winners. Welcome to the 2020 Champion Awards. Let's hear from the founder and CEO of the Female Founders Alliance, Leslie Feinzig. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. The Champion Awards are the highlight of my year. The first gala back in 2018 was the first big event I ever did for the Female Founders Alliance. and. Even then, it was just me and a few volunteers, but it was magic. And last year, it was more magic. It was this beautiful gala with hundreds of people, and I was 37 weeks pregnant with little Ruth here. <laughs> I got on stage that day, I wobbled on and gave this rousing speech, and it was just so special. And so when the pandemic took grip on the country in March, you know, very early we knew that we couldn't have the Champion Awards as planned, but I still thought that we would be able to do it. We kept pushing the date so that we could do it in person. And then at some point in mid-April or May, it became evident that we wouldn't be able to and that we would have to do it online. And, you know, that broke my heart because for all of these long, tedious days of the pandemic, I'd been looking forward to the Champion Awards, this gala. I pictured myself getting all dressed up again and that beautiful room surrounded by hundreds of my friends and my community. I pictured all the music and the speeches and the thunderous applause and getting on stage. And by that point, we would have conquered the pandemic, the most trying moment of our lives for many of us. And that night we would hug again and we would clink classes again and we would talk face to face again. We would rise together again. That's not what life had in store for us this year. Instead, we're home in yoga pants and ponytails with babies in our arms, trying to work full time while caring for kids full-time and homeschooling full-time. That's just those of us who are lucky enough to still have our jobs and our homes and our help and our families because millions are not. There's just so much darkness out there right now, fear and heartbreak and turmoil all around us. And this year, with all of this going on, I've just thought a lot about my grandparents who survived more tragedy and turmoil than most of us can even imagine. 
persecution and poverty and untimely deaths. And when my grandmother died in 2004, I remember at her funeral, all these people would come up to me and say, oh, she lived such a hard life, such a tragic life. Finally, she can rest. And you know what? I just kept thinking to myself, it's not how I remember her. I remember her joy, her laughter and her warmth and her smile. And my family taught me that even through the hardest times, we can find our way to joy. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we can too. And so my friends, wherever you are, Ruth and I are sending you love and health and resilience. And most importantly, I send you hope. Hope for all the good people in this world that dedicate their lives and careers <laughs> to leaving something behind that is better <laughs> than what they received. We're gonna be here doing this work long after this is over. And so without further ado, because Ruth is ready for dinner, I give you the humbling, amazing finalists of this year's Champion Awards. Let's start the show. What do you think? <laughs> First in line is the Role Model Award brought to you by Copacino Fujikado. I am Alyssa. I'm Catherine. I'm Karina. We're from Copacino Fujikado. A role model demonstrates what's possible for ambitious women. They are someone with a long trajectory, demonstrated integrity and leadership in their field who inspires other women to strive for greatness. We're so proud to present the finalists for this year's Role Model Award. Melinda and I have known each other almost 20 years. We worked together at MTV Networks and she was a role model even then. Her career speaks for itself. She went on to work for some of the best companies in media at a C-level and exec position, including places like Getty Images, Hearst, Meredith, and Buzzfeed. And now she is the CEO of her own firm. She's an incredible, extraordinary person, an empathetic leader, and a wonderful person loved by all of her teams. Loria leads by example. When she took over as head of Seattle YMCA a couple years ago, she took learn to swim lessons and posted the video. With her leadership, the Y completely pivoted its work to be a shelter and safety net for frontline workers during the pandemic. Through her stewardship, the Y has opened up a shelter for homeless youth, something she is passionate about. And in her spare time, she works tirelessly on equity issues. As one of the few black women leaders in global health, Dr. Tony Hoover is a role model and trailblazer for women and underrepresented minorities. Today, she leads strategy, planning, and management for global health at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Her team helps deliver high-impact interventions in global health by integrating the network of diverse partners involved in product development. Not only is Tony's impressive career and community leadership exemplary, but her generosity, kindness, and humility is truly what sets her apart as a role model for so many. Wei is the head of grocery tech, product, and supply chain at Amazon. She served as a tech advisor through Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos and worked her way up for almost 15 years. She immigrated herself to the U.S. for grad school and quickly established herself in that realm. We need to remember that we always come out stronger through adversity and through women like Wei, which is also about modeling the way for others, She's a perfect example of how her humble beginnings allows others to see themselves in her. She is the epitome of ambition driven by cause. She has worked to reach the top of both the public and private sectors to achieve her mission of creating an equitable and safe environment. But what is equally impressive to all of her accomplishments is her commitment to bringing women along with her the entire way. As the EPA administrator, Lisa filled top leadership positions with women. As a brand new college graduate working at the EPA, it was truly inspiring to look around the room and see so many female faces. Congratulations, Lisa, 
and thank you. I'm thrilled to have nominated Melinda Lee. Gloria Gaydon. I nominated Tony. Wait. I nominated Lisa for the Role Model Award. Ready? Okay. It is my honor to announce the winner of the 2020 Champion Awards in the Role Model category is Loria Yaden. Congratulations, Loria. Thanks to FFA for uh, this amazing nomination and the opportunity uh, to be among this group of amazing um, women and non-binary nominees. I didn't have access to pools like other kids um, in our small rural town because they were not open to people of color. Um, but we overcome. Uh, here we are. Uh, I'm learning how to swim now. Uh, my kids have learned how to swim and we have an opportunity now to ensure that those barriers that existed before, that they don't exist uh, today. If we have any opportunity uh, to break them down, this is our opportunity. So I'm pleased to stand in a place where uh, all of the opportunity has been given to me, that I can stand in the doorway and hold open the door for others to come after, and to stand on the shoulders of the greats who help us get here. I would love to have that opportunity with all of you uh, to um, ensure that we can be the shoulders on which uh, women of tomorrow will stand. So FFA, thank you again for this opportunity. And uh, thanks to all of you for all of your great work. Next up, the Sponsor Award, brought to you by Reverb. I'm Michaela Kiner, founder and CEO of Reverb and author of Female Firebrands. A sponsor is someone who uses their resources and network to help the women they mentor advance and succeed in their careers. I'm personally grateful for so many women and men who have helped me along my professional journey. I'm extremely proud to announce the finalists for this year's Sponsor Award. She's the person who's able to see you and all of your potential and enables you to crack that open in a way that I had never experienced before as a business owner. In her role at Microsoft, she enables nearly a half a million organizations across the globe to think about technology as a tool for inclusion and access in this new world of work. Kate has been supporting women and girls for years. She's the CEO of Women 2.0 and recently launched the W Fund to invest in women founders. She's been an active leader in the tech ecosystem for over 15 years. She has personally opened doors to so many and is a sponsor that we can all strive to emulate. She is an investor who has gone above and beyond. She's constantly sharing the most helpful resources, tips and articles for founders, new funds, grant opportunities, angel investors, all with a specific focus on marginalized groups. She's leading the charge to finally get money into the hands of founders like me so that we can have the chance to prove her right. She is and always has been about taking action and getting checks into more diverse hands. She established and leads EY's executive and board network. Sarah uses her platform to help individuals, especially women and people of color, navigate the pathway to executive suites and boardrooms. Sarah has long advocated for women and minority candidates and has helped many, including me, achieve that all-important first corporate board seat. Trish Melinas Dezico is co-founder and executive director of the Technology Access Foundation. Trish left Microsoft to start TAF with the goal to ensure that students of color have access to the skills they need to compete in the growing technology scene. Now, TAF is a model for teaching in public schools. The organization has served 19,000 students with a 95% high school graduation rate and a 100% college acceptance rate. I nominated Karen. Kate. I nominated Lolita. I nominated Sarah Francis Bland. Trish Melinas Dezico. So with that said, are you guys ready to hear uh, who the community selected? Yeah. Okay. It is my honor 
to announce that the winner for the 2020 Champion Awards in the sponsor category is Trish Milanis Zico. Congratulations, Trish. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad you made this national because I got a chance to meet some cool people I would not have met otherwise um, and learn about. Um, I think all of us have made our personal mission to lead the way for others and to knock down barriers and open those doors. Uh, for me, the hope is in the future, and I spend most of my time with our kids um, because uh, my hope is that some of our girls will end up right here eventually when they get older. So thank you all very much. Congratulations to all of us. And um, I think that we've all made our mark, and one day we'll get a chance to rest. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Julia Mancuso, Olympic skier and new mother. I hope you are all feeling inspired listening to the incredible people and organizations here today. Congratulations to the Female Founders Alliance, to all the nominees and finalists. The work that you do is so meaningful and important. It propels us forward and closer to a more equitable future for our children. Today, we celebrate you because you deserve it. So thank you so much. Congratulations once again. And I'm so proud of everyone. And I'm just honored to be here speaking to you and to just be part of a powerful group of women that want to change the world for the better. And now get ready for the Investor Award brought to you by Seattle Bank. Hi, I'm Josh Williams with Seattle Bank. An investor has literally put their money where their mouth is when it comes to supporting women-led businesses and helping founders to succeed. So I'm proud to announce this year's finalists for the Investors Award. Victor's Capital is on a mission to change the funding landscape for women. They are fueled by a passion for addressing the female funding gap and have made over 21 investments across the U.S. in early stage consumer driven companies. Victorious Capital brings investing, entrepreneurial and operational expertise to all the companies that they work with. They truly are game changers, core shakers and consumer creators. I nominated Sogal Ventures because it is the first female led next generation venture capital firm. Their nonprofit arm, Sogal Foundation, has over 50 chapters all across the world. Black Bean Seeds was formed to connect, engage, empower, and advance Black venture investors by providing a community built for and by Black VCs. With a mission to make the Southeast the best place for a woman to invest in and grow a business, the Jump Fund has now invested in over 28 women led companies in the Southeast and is one of the few funds in the region built by women for women. X-Factor Ventures makes pre-seed and seed stage investments in companies with billion dollar market opportunities that have at least one female founder. The diversity extends beyond gender and the founders that come from less privileged backgrounds represent a tremendous and untapped market opportunity. And I'm honored to introduce my colleagues at Victor's Capital, Sogal Ventures, Black Bean Seas, The Jump Fund, X Factor Ventures, as nominees in the investor category of the Champion Awards. On behalf of the FFA team, I also want to say a very special thank you because I know that this category is a tricky one. Um, I know that a lot of investors prefer to stay in the background. Um, and we are really, really grateful that you uh, agreed to take the spotlight for a minute, because I know that it's not necessarily where you're all most comfortable, um, but I think that you deserve it at least for a minute. So with that, are you ready to hear who won? Okay, it's my honor to announce the winner of the 2020 Champion Awards in the Investor category is Black VC. Sydney Frederick, congratulations. Thank you all so much. We're so excited and honored to be um, really awarded by you guys, people who identify so well with our mission. We're working towards the same goals. I think when I heard about your organization from Frederick and then read more online, it just sounded so perfect, the idea of how do we get dollars in the right place? And it's not just about 
um, a movement. It's not just about speaking an idea. It's really about making sustainable long-term change in the industry and controlling where venture, uh, where dollars, where funding, where the futures of industries go. So thank you all so much. We really hope that um, the attention you've brought and the work that you've done will help us push our goals even further, help more founders, help more funders, and ultimately make the industry a better place. So thank you all for, for helping us with this and, and giving us this award. And we are just ecstatic to be uh, able to be here today and ecstatic because of all everything uh, you all have been up to as well. Uh, we have always found ourselves to be amongst kindred spirits when we've engaged with everyone at, uh, at FFA. Um, and excited to continue to see all the work that you guys have all done in the Pacific Northwest extend across the country. Um, and it aligns very much with the way we try to work across different regions and try to drive this message to really build this into a movement. So thank you so much. Ready, Set, Raise is a pitching and fundraising accelerator that is really focused on taking a solid, substantial business idea that is scalable and addresses a giant market and helps that founder tell her story to the right people at the right time so that she can raise her round and achieve her goals. Yeah, it's hard to capture, you know, my experience with the cohort because it's, it's like trying to describe magic. You know, you get people together that have a common passion for their business and really are, are there for each other to support each other and cheer each other on and you can't bottle that. The access that Ready, Set, Raise creates to mentors, coaches, the community is unbelievable. By having the small cohort size, the hand-picked one-on-one -on -one mentorship, it allowed us to deep dive with people that we otherwise would probably not have a chance to work with. How great is it that eight of us came into the first week and then to have watched my cohort members grow and raise and close and their stories evolve and get crisper and then to get the kind of response we got from the investor demo, that has been tremendous to see. Applications for Ready, Set, Raise Cohort 3 are now open. Apply before September 8th and learn more on our website femalefounders.org forward slash accelerate. Next up, the Founder Award brought to you by Microsoft for Startups. Hi, my name is Annie Parker from the Microsoft for Startups team and I lead all things equity and inclusion for our programs. Founders face great adversity in launching and growing their businesses. It takes courage, tenacity and passion to really make it work. So I'm so proud today to present the finalists for this year's Founder Award. Congratulations to all of you. She is truly a revolutionary founder whose company is changing the world. She has worked tirelessly for years at Full Harvest Mission and has convinced venture capitalists to invest in her company and her vision of the world and the food industry. She's such an inspiration to so many female founders who have mission-based businesses. Ever since I've known her, she's had this amazing sense of self that gives you confidence that she will accomplish these amazing goals that she set out for herself and for her team. And I think her level-headedness and grit are a great example for entrepreneurs everywhere. And she's someone who I really respect. Naj is a solo founder, and she came up with an idea to create a space to support people of color. And she made her vision come to life in nine months. She's a true hustler. She created a community of thousands based on her vision and without spending a dime on advertising. When COVID hit, she quickly pivoted to ensure that her community is thriving online, growing at a faster rate than pre-COVID. 
She's a genuine, humble, hardworking, one of a kind. She is just a rock star founder um, and an amazing CEO that has raised over $8 million here in the Southeast alone. I was introduced to Savitri a few years ago when I saw an article in Hypotamus, um, a local entrepreneurial blog about how she was having trouble as a young black woman raising capital. I am so impressed with how quickly she's grown this company to an enterprise model. I'm excited to have nominated Savitri. She has been all over the news. Go Savitri. She's the ultimate role model. Tiffany, your book, Drop the Ball, was game changing for me. As a new mom, I felt so understood. I found myself literally yelling at the book. Yes, that's exactly how I feel. And then you gave real tactical advice for how to craft your best life. You're an example of what's possible for us ambitious and career-driven women. And what I love is that you show how to be family and impact-driven as well. I'm so grateful for you and your work. I nominated Christine. I nominated Lean. Naj is ace. I nominated Savitri Wilson. I nominated Tiffany Dupu. Are you guys ready to find out who won? I am very excited to announce that this year's winner of the Founder Award is Tiffany Dupu. Yay! Woohoo! Oh, that's so lovely. <laughs> you want to say extra few words, Tiffany? Oh, I just, um, sorry, I'm a little taken aback. Uh, thank you so much. All of us work so hard. Uh, all of us get up every day, and Josh and Key, I know that your founders do that too. I know they're not here, but that's that's why they're not present is because we get up and we just do it over and over and over. Savitri, you know what it's like to just get up and to just keep pushing and to keep moving. And none of us does it because we're going to get paid a ton of money. <laughs> none of us does it because we really want a bunch of accolades. We, we do it because we're passion and purpose driven people. And so it's really lovely to be honored and to be recognized and to be doing so in the company of such other incredible women and men who were standing in for them, which I did notice, by the way, which is great. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. And uh, I feel like I'm accepting this on behalf of all of us. My life's work is advancing women and girls. That's pretty much why I'm on the planet. So I feel really lucky that I get to execute my purpose as founder and CEO of the crew and as author of Drop the Ball and uh, on the board of Girls Who Code and Simmons University in Boston, I have to give them a shout out too. Uh, I'm here because I'm the cumulative investment of a lot of women who have poured themselves into me, who have mentored me and sponsored me. And my mother who told me every day, Tiffany, you're so smart and you're so loved and you're so beautiful. So if every day I can get up and I can do that for as many women as I can get to, that's why I'm here. Uh, thank you so much, Leslie, and to the entire team at FFA. I really value what you're doing to support female founders. And uh, I feel like you're a whisper in my ear. So thank you so much for your support. The prizes are in store very soon, but first, let's reveal the Advocate Award brought to you by Providence Ventures. I'm Sara Vaezi, Chief Digital Strategy and Business Development Officer at Providence St. Joseph Health. An advocate is an individual or organization who uses their public platform to promote and advance women's causes. I am proud to present the finalists for this year's Advocate Award. Charlotte is an outspoken activist who uses her platform to raise awareness on issues related to LGBTQ rights, feminism, and veterans affairs. Jacqueline is not only an amazing attorney, she is also a genocide survivor who has advocated for genocide survivors and educated others against the about the importance of genocide, education, and prevention. Sheila has been a leading advocate for equity, diversity, and inclusion throughout her career. Sheila is innovative, collaborative, and a true change maker within Seattle Central College and our entire community. Being disabled requires constant self-advocacy. 
with doctors to get the right care, with complete strangers to open a door to get access to a building, with governments, with workplaces to get the accommodations necessary to live, to work, just to exist. This is why the work that Tiffany does is so important. When your simple existence requires constant advocacy, people like Tiffany and organizations like Diversability, they lighten the load. And for many, they make life livable. Since joining Starbucks, Zing has led our company through courageous conversations following the senseless murders of Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd. She has worked on the civil rights assessment that resulted in the increase of our representation goals across both women and people of color across all levels and all roles. I am so pleased to have nominated Jacqueline, Charlotte Clymer, Dr. Sheila Edwards Lang, Tiffany Zing. I'm honored to announce the 2020 Champion Awards in the advocate category goes to Jacqueline Moricatete. Congratulations, Jacqueline. Having listened to all the stories and the incredible work that all the women here are doing uh, just inspires me to work harder. Uh, because at the end of the day, it is, very, it is clear that we have the same goal and the same mission, and that is uh, creating a world where um, diversity is seen as the Holocaust survivor. One of my mentors um, used to say that where diversity is seen not as adversity, but as an asset that should be uh, embraced and uh, encouraged and, and cherished. I want to thank you for the incredible work that you are doing to propel women forward and to give women a platform to talk about the good work that they are doing. Almost There, the Company Award brought to you by Cooley. I'm Patty Sellers, co-CEO of Sellers Easton Media and chair of the Fortune Most Powerful Women's Summit. I spent my career writing for Fortune, and 22 years ago, we started Fortune Most Powerful Women to celebrate and support women leaders. Now I have my own storytelling company, and telling stories, bringing attention to people, to people in business, to entrepreneurs who are doing things right is so important. I love what Female Founders Alliance is all about. Support, connect, and accelerate. Today we're connecting in new ways, unfortunately, but we're dealing with it. I'm here to talk about support. The company award is presented to an organization that has created a work culture that supports and advances women, forging meaningful outcomes for employees that run counter to what the trends, what the usual habits in an industry are all about. By presenting this award, you're doing exactly what is needed, shining a light and telling a story. Kudos and congratulations. Hi, I'm Sonia Erickson from Cooley. I'm proud to present the finalists for this year's award. In an industry that was not built with women in mind, Elvis truly sets itself apart by being a financial services company built for women, by women, and with a mission to put more money in the hands of women. The mission of Fairy Godboss is to improve the workplace for all women by increasing transparency. Fairy Godboss is truly committed to creating a work culture that supports and helps women advance in the workplace. With a workforce that is overwhelmingly female, Madison Reed was able to pivot and transition virtually all employees from behind the chair to a customer service center. The company grew stronger through the pandemic with a female founder at the helm. Because of Rupika's belief in hiring diverse backgrounds and their involvement in the community, we're able to show these younger generations of girls that there are many diverse and non-linear paths to success and that there's strength in having your own unique background story. I feel incredibly lucky to be working under this leadership and that despite being in a prominently male field, I'm at a company where I'm trusted and valued and I get to work with this incredibly diverse team that helps me grow and allows me to give back to my community. So thank you, Rebecca. 
Ascendio was founded on the belief that the best companies are the ones that treat employees fairly. Most importantly, Sindio's customers use that software to identify the underlying issues that cause the problems to ensure change endures. Ready to find out? It is my honor to announce the winner of the 2020 Champion Awards in the company category is Sindio. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. I'm so honored. I wasn't expecting this. Um, thank you so much. What a great, what a great honor for our team and our company. And not only that, our customers. And I say it all the time. This is not a women's issue. This is a leadership issue. And as leaders, we have the moral responsibility to use the positions we're in, our posi positions of influence to move the needle on these topics. And to me, if you want to talk about racial injustice at your company or you want to talk about diversity, equity, and, and inclusion, it starts with fair pay. It is the absolute foundation. Make sure you're paying your people fairly. So I just think all of the leaders on this call are taking the challenge. They're doing what it takes. They've got their, their marching orders, and I just i am so appreciative. Congratulations to all of the finalists and winners. And now one final surprise. Every year among the hundreds of nominations, we learn of people who do amazing work but get very little recognition. That's why we have a tradition of selecting a group of these nominees, whom we call the Unsung Heroes, to sing their praises and give credit where it is due. Here to introduce this year's Unsung Heroes are the Female Founders Alliance team. Hi everyone, I'm Rory. I'm Amanda. And I'm Divya. And we are from the Female Founders Alliance. Unsung heroes are leaders who have worked tirelessly in the shadows to provide some meaningful support to our communities. Whether being on the front lines during the global pandemic or being active in the fight against racial injustice, we are proud to present the Unsung Heroes for 2020. We believe that college is the rule. We are here today to celebrate the class of 2022 because we know you're going to college. I was just on a call earlier and somebody asked like why and it's I think each and every one of us embodies that when we see something happening in the world that's just not wrong we can't live with it and we just have to go out and do it. We are not waiting for somebody else to do it so that's why we do it. I do what I do is because in the nonprofit space I've seen a lot of uh, folks talk about the people that we serve and you know we can't truly serve people if we also resent them or if we don't understand them and if we aren't actively asking them what it is we need and so I would love to get to a place where I'm not just advocating for people but actually advocating alongside them. And here in the United States nearly 40 million people experience hunger every single year including more than 11 million children. They go to bed hungry every night. Yet we're wasting more food than ever before. More than 80 billion pounds a year to be exact. We believe that where we spend our money matters because small businesses uniquely connect us, bridge differences, and simply make our communities better. When we spend like it matters, everyday decisions about where we eat, drink, and shop become an investment in a more connected, inclusive, equitable society. My, my writing and journalism has always sort of centered uh, the voices, spaces, places, uh, communities of, 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 of people of color. Um, and, and specifically some of the questions that we don't ask in mainstream media about uh, who gets to be called genius. This award uh, makes me feel special. It's on song, um, but I believe um, in, in how if we do the work the founders that are in my care are going to receive the capital that they need. And that means that we have 50% of angel investors who are women who are activating their capital to invest. 
and 50% of startup founders being women who receive capital to make their dreams a reality. I started the company in 2017. It wasn't just about creating a product, it was about changing the world by empowering people to explore and love and celebrate their bodies and their identities giving everyone the confidence to create a more equitable world. I embarked on this founder journey four years ago, like while I was a rideshare driver, not knowing that I was going to be where I am today. It's been a journey for sure, but thankfully I've, you know, I've surrounded myself with people that are very encouraging and people who look up to me and shop at Nexus mission and I couldn't be more grateful. I think that, you know, for somebody whose mission uh, is to make giving support easier, um, I loved hearing uh, mention of support from Deepthi and Brittany and, and talking about how this community can be supportive because I know um, how hard it is and the fact that every one of you has been um, is up here for an Unsung Hero Award means that you are giving that support to people, to communities, to each other, to your team, and it's, it's hard. Um, often working in a silo, so I deeply appreciate this community of very talented and passionate women, so thank you for creating this space. Thank you so much. I am so humbled and so honored by this. There's a saying that tough times don't last, but tough people do. The times have been truly tough, but receiving this is a reminder that we are tougher than the times. And I'm just so grateful. And I salute all of the women who are receiving this award. Thank you all, so grateful. I am honored to be the first to formally congratulate you on being the 2020 Unsung Hero Awardees. Give yourself some applause. Yay, everybody. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. I look forward to seeing and talking to many of you in the mingle party after this. This show was lovingly produced by the Small But Mighty Female Founders Alliance team from home with not a lot of time or equipment. I'm so grateful to Divya Kakad, Rory Titcomb, Amanda Eldridge, to the Champion Committee, to all of our partners and everybody who participated in the Zoom calls, everybody who turned in videos, we could not have done any of this without you. We might not be able to get together right now to clink those glasses and to take off those shoes and to hit the dance floor. But what we needed was to connect. And I hope you got a little bit of that hope and connection today. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you and have a great day. Megan Rapino is opening the champion. <laughs> no! Are you serious? Yes! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I told I was like, Laura, I need to go talk to Rory and Tibia immediately. <laughs> You're gonna listen. You are oh kidding. my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>